Welcome to our review of Aqualand, a two-player abstract strategy board game. Aqualand was designed by Marcello Bertucci and published by Cosmos in 2020. Features artwork from Sophie Reka Rekasowski. Uh, this two-player abstract strategy game takes minutes to learn and under half an hour to play. Aqualand has a nice low MSRP of 1995 US. Now, it's also worth noting that Aqualand was nominated for the 2020 Golden Geek Best Two-Player Game Award. Have you played Aqualand? Listen in to see if we think it's a solid game or for the fishes. So the extremely pasted on theme of Aqualand has players trying to manage groups of sea creatures with one player trying to group them by color and the other trying to group them by type with points being awarded for groups of two or more once the board's filled. One of the things that stands out about this game is the really great quality of tiles, which you can see for yourself on our Aqualine unboxing video on YouTube. Now these tiles are Azul quality, though not nearly as colorful. They all come in the same color, blue, featuring one of six animals and one of six colors on each of the tiles with an equal representation of each. The game also comes with a board that's honestly nothing more than a 6x6 grid to place your tiles on, and very clear and succinct rulebook. Simple enough. Well, now that we know, we we'll have an idea about what you get. How about you tell us how to play Aqualand? So Aqualand is very simple to learn. I'll teach you the entire game here in probably under a minute. One player plays species, the other player plays colors. You mix up all the tiles face down, then flip six face up. Starting player picks a tile and places it somewhere on the 6x6 grid board, then reveals a new place. Going forward, each turn, players have the option to move one tile that's on the board orthogonally in a straight line until it hits another piece or the edge. They then place a new tile from the face-up ones onto the board and reveal a new tile. This continues until the board's full, at which point you add up the points. Each player scores points for each group of orthogonally adjacent tiles in their type, again, species or color, with two tiles being worth one, three tiles being worth three, four, five, five, ten, and if someone managed to get all six matching tiles to touch, they get a big 15 points. That's it. That's honestly all there is to it. Nice and easy to learn. So what do you think of this tile laying game? So Aqualand is one of those easy to learn, but difficult to master abstract strategy games. The rules are dead simple, but it's not until you actually start playing and specifically start sliding pieces around that you realize how much depth there really is here. In that way, Aqualand has a very chess-like feel where players will be trying to plan multiple turns ahead while playing the game. So be warned that because as well as moving pieces, your opponent can pick and place a tile that you planned on pacing. Mm -hmm. As a result, too much planning will re result in wasted effort when they yeah. place the tile that you wanted somewhere completely different. So remember, there are only six tiles face up for you to pick from. So it's not necessarily the chance that they're going to steal that one pink fish you wanted. And so far in all the plays I've been part of, this has never been a problem of anyone picking the tile I wanted to place, but rather placing tiles where I don't want them to be because they block things, or more frequently moving a piece I don't want them to move that was already on the board. Over multiple plays, though, I have learned that my long-term plans were often broken very early in the chain, like one or two turns in, and I've had to adopt my play. Now, in this way, Aqualine ends up being more of a tactical and a reactionary game than a strategic one. Now, I wouldn't specifically say this is a bad thing, but it helps if you know this going in. I personally would have preferred a bit more strategy, though I don't see how they could have changed it to allow for that. So I think this game benefits from those who are able to think and more importantly, rethink strategy on the fly, as opposed to those who plan far enough with move trees, you know, the whole chess thing. Exactly. Now, physically, the game's top-notch. Um, I really dig the look and feel of the tiles, and I love how small and portable the game is overall. Now, Deanna and I are always looking for games we can bring with us to play at places like coffee shops and brew pubs, and Aqualine is going to be perfect for that. The only real problem, as far as portability is concerned, is the board. 
uh, the six by six grid. And we've been considering getting some type of other version to use, like a neoprene mat, maybe, or a mouse pad with a six by six grid on it. And then we can use this for this game, but also the Duke, which is another two player tile laying game we love that also uses a six by six grid. Indeed, there's certainly nothing special about the board. If you frequent restaurants with crayons and paper tabletops, you could draw it out and you'd only need the tiles. Krabby Joe's for Aqualin at 6 p.m. tonight. Now, a surprise to me with this game was actually how much my oldest daughter enjoys it. Perhaps because she was, up until yesterday, completely undefeated. Since getting the game, it's become a favorite for Deanna and Gwen to play together. They both enjoy it significantly more than I do, and it's not that I don't enjoy it myself. It's just that they're loving it more than me. For me, it kind of sits below Onitama, the Duke, and Patchwork on my two-player game ladder. And honestly, three down is not a bad place to be. Yeah, I, I think I would probably put it above Patchwork, but it's not quite at Duke level for me. Holy fair. Now, one complaint I do have, and it's a minor one, is the choice of iconography and the theme. Like, really, the theme makes no sense. Like, uh, I, I don't quite understand how the theme even applies. And well, in the middle of a game, it's not easy to see at a glance what's what. And I honestly think the gameplay of Aquiline could have been improved if they used geometric shapes instead. And what keeps coming to mind, and I honestly think there might be six shapes and six colors in it, is Quirkle. As opposed to these kind of artistic angular fish and crabs that we have. Yeah, it, this one is an interesting thing, and I read there's a lot of uh, discussion about this. A lot of owners complain about the subtlety of the graphics and that bright lighting helps with the play. Okay. I actually think that this was a deliberate aspect of the game. Okay. The game makes you think about color and shape in a specific way that would have been reduced if you made it just more obvious. Uh, you get into that, um, you know, you look at the word red, but it's it's, it's written in green and you green have to say down. the color of it. And there's a little bit of that brain work that's going on in this game. I think I, I think that was deliberately implemented okay. by the designers. I could see that. So overall, our family's really been enjoying Aqualine since we got it. Um, it's a solid addition to our stable of two player games. Great looking, quick to learn and has that difficult to master thing going on, which honestly is a magic combo for any good abstract game. Got the bonus of being small and portable that will make it perfect for gaming at pubs and cafes, as well as breaking out at home. If you're a fan of two-player abstract strategy games, I don't think you're going to go wrong picking up a copy of Aqua. Now, if you're looking for a thinky filler that's great for two players and simple to teach new players, this would also be a good choice. If what you love about abstract games, though, is the long-term planning involving looking three, four, five, and six turns ahead, you may find Aquiline frustrating as the board state changes so frequently. You may just love it, though. So here, I think I leave this one up to you. Maybe seek out a copy to try or play before you can buy. Now, if you are looking for a very cool thematic underwater game where you're controlling hordes of fish, I, I, this isn't it. This is, this is purely abstract. Um, one of the most pasted on themes I've ever seen. Um, like I get schools of similar animals gathering, at least one player, but like animals of the same color gathering together, that's that's too much of a stretch for me. As noted above, I actually think I might have liked the game more if it just used geometric shapes and just went, look, we're an abstract, deal with it. Finally, if you're not a fan of abstract strategy games, chess-like two-player games where you're trying to outmaneuver your opponent, I don't think Aquan's going to win you over, though... With the really flat and short learning curve, if you get a chance, try the game out. Maybe it'll win you over and you'll be surprised. Well, that's it for our review of Aqualine from Cosmos. When you have time, I invite you to also check out the written review over at tabletopbellhop.com. <laughs>